Now, you believe that we need to have a discussion about the abuse of politicians on social media. Explain more. Well, I think everybody uh, in Ireland, uh, in the whole island, uh, was extremely upset at the murder, the brutal murder and slaying of a young British uh, woman Labour MP, Joe Cox, last week. And we saw very moving tributes to her yesterday across the party spectrum in the House of Commons. Now, uh, before uh, her murder, uh, she was the subject of fairly serious uh, uh, attacks on social media, as many, many uh, women and male politicians are. And while politicians, in a certain sense, by putting their name in a poster, you may say, ask for it, and while everybody welcomes robust political debate, discussion and argument, there is a point at which social media can move from beyond the point of argument, democratic argument, reasonable argument, into the level of hate. Now, you, have, that, used, uh, you have used Joe Cox as an example, um, uh, and just to make sure that we're, we're using her name um, um, in the right way, the person uh, that, that murdered her, uh, are, you, are, we, are, are uh, we saying that he, he had made threats against her on social no, media? No, I don't know that at all. Right. I just know in the coverage on the English media that she had been. But the point is, the people who are uh, doing this on social media, very often they're the people who probably wouldn't lay a finger ever physically on anybody else, uh, but they may indulge heavily in essentially what is hate speech on social media. And what I'm just saying is, if anything good is to come out of this horrible event to a, a young mother, a wife, somebody very dedicated to all the different causes she campaigned for and her politics, then it should pause to give us thought that while the people who are doing this on social media, do they think about the consequences that other people who may be far less mentally stable may read into and absorb this uh, hate mail and uh, does it mean that it then emboldens people, uh, certain people, to do stuff that they would never otherwise do? Now, let me say this as well, that this is very important in relation to our children and our grandchildren, that we have had numerous episodes around the world of young teenagers, very vulnerable, conscious of their self-image, growing up, trying to make their way in the world, trying to make the best of their lives. And again, um, very difficult language used towards them on social media can have consequences um, that in some cases turn out to be very, very tragic. So what I'm saying is that social media has been wonderful for the world of communications, for expanding our horizons, our knowledge. But there are people using social media and I think it's yeah, but how? Cool. But but if you're going to go into to, in, in, into controlling your deputy, I mean, how far do you go? What are you suggesting? Well, I think there's a number of things that can be done. Uh, first of all, the use of certain language, uh, which is used uh, towards, uh, particularly towards women. And by the way, in terms of politics, about eighty percent of this hate language is directed at women politicians and about 20% of it towards male politicians. So it cuts across the spectrum, but it's more towards women than towards men. Secondly, um, we have a situation where some uh, social media companies are beginning in a small way to filter some of the language. But when you have extremely vile and degradating language used in particular uh, towards women and then maybe used in a wider context by other people towards other people, my own view is that technology is advancing at a level which would allow an awful lot of these particular words to be actually edited out. Yeah, but you can... You can, you can but the problem... Sorry, uh, Doug. I, I understand that definitely, but 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 the reality is, is you know, I could you I could use an offensive word in social media, and put two dots between two letters. That's uh, not good enough. Yeah, but That's but the, but the point enough. I'm saying is, is that the the message would still still come across. So I, I'm just wondering. No, 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 no. That's not good enough. 
if you use, for instance, say, towards women, uh, something like the C word, mm. and that followed by three asterisks, everyone who's reading that reads in their head what that word is. You, you, look, that, that's, people understand language. That's my uh, point. So how, how would you... But, so but, the whole word would have to be filtered out. And I'm saying there are words that are not acceptable in uh, ordinary discourse. Remember... I am all in favour of robust argument, but I am absolutely opposed. And I think we in Irish society should think about it, that we shouldn't use hateful language on social media. Argument, yes. Uh, discussion, yes. Disagreement, yes. OK, but... Not- but- Hateful, yeah, but, but this is this is censorship to to an extent, and I do understand why you would call for this. But say, for instance, uh, with my group of friends on social media, say I like to use that language, but not in a degrading way towards someone, and I can't. I mean, is that? And I, I, I know. I'm suggesting it's certainly in relation to public social media, a lot of which is uh, encountered by public figures. Uh, they could be journalists. They could be politicians. Uh, they could be people for a variety of reasons in the media, uh, people involved uh, in entertainment and so on. I'm just saying that the, 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 the IT technology is available to actually filter it. And my strong... Now, I have a lot of sympathy for politicians. For, everybody, yeah. for everybody's health, mm. particularly everybody's mental health, it should... Uh, be filtered out, and I think this is a conversation we need in this society. But you're, you're but you're, you're then what's happening is is you're legislating for the language people can use on the I internet. Don't, I, don't, I don't believe that it's particularly necessary to legislate, although some legislation may be desirable. I'm not particularly in favour of censorship, uh, but when people use a medium which has the ability to mm. do great da- damage to other people, well then to see it regulated, to see it filtered in a way that removes some of the harm to me makes absolute sense. Now, I don't want to labour this point, uh, but but what I'm trying to get... I'm not someone who has used bad language on social media, but if an anonymous person with no followers on Twitter um, very wrongly wants to stop and start up an account and, 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 and hurl horrible abuse, uh, they should be dealt with, of, of course. But then if I choose, just choose to, in social media, in my circle of, of people, to use swear words, to use offensive language, as some may see it, I'd be blocked from doing that because anonymous uh, down the country is using that language in an in in a an offensive way against someone. How can that be policed? Well, can I just say this to you, Greg? And I understand what you're saying in, is that in a private discussion with your friends at the end of the night in a pub, say <laughs> people might throw language around a bit, and so late at night or something like that. Uh, people might throw language around a bit. But we have to think about the consequences for our broader society. And particularly, you have to think of the example that people like young teenagers absorb, that social media is open season in relation to anything. Can I just give you an example? In the last oil, two of my uh, colleagues in the oil, Senator Lorraine Higgins and S- Senator Maria Cahill, were subject to the most vile abuse. On but in, in, in Maria, and but I understand that, that and that's wrong. But, it, but Maria, Cahill, Maria Cahill herself made a, a, a great deal of strong accusations on social media as well. So it's an implement that she used uh, to, 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 in her search for her justice. But the point, the point is this. Would you censor that? Sorry, sorry, the point is this. There was absolutely vile language used towards two women parliamentarians. Now, if people want to have a discussion, a political discussion, a political argument, a political disagreement with those two people or with any other two people, then that is fine. That's what politics is about. It's about discussion and argument. But I'm saying that when very vile language is used, very degrading language, particularly of women, I think it's time that as a society we pause for thought. I'm not asking you, Greg, by the way, to agree with me. You're putting forward a point of view that I understand, but I'm just saying that this has become so pervasive and destructive in parts of social media that it's not good for anybody and it's not good broadly for our society. We need to take hate uh, language out of social media discourse.
Mm. Um, yeah, but I'm not putting them across my point of view per se, but I'm putting an opposing point of view. People would, would, would not like censorship. And I just think once you start censoring a little bit, uh, then the floodgates are open next thing, you know, you know, and, and people will feel that if politicians are calling for this, uh, they, they, they'll they probably want to, to push it out a little bit further to say, well, well you know, you know. Well, unfortunately, we have too many sad examples in this country of instances where this has happened. And as I said, we do have to think of the impact of this kind of behaviour and the message that it sends, particularly to younger people and to teenagers, when they're very much vulnerable uh, about either their image or who's friends with them or who's not friends with them. And they're the simple points that I'm making. I'm not somebody who favours censorship at all, but I'm saying that social media has produced an awful lot of good in the world, but this element of it, is not good, and it's not good for the people who are doing this. But would you not be inclined... It's definitely not good for but, the people but, receiving but it. But why not then... Uh, why not then make the companies, uh, the likes of Twitter, Facebook and so on, more responsible for for uh, banning just, these accounts? Just, but rather than having it that everybody well, can't say F... Just, just let me say this. What I've suggested are two simple things. One is that words should be filtered out. And as I said to you, I don't believe uh, words with three asterisks are, are an appropriate way of filtering out. In my view, they should just be deleted and taken out. Secondly, uh, in relation to people who do this on a repeat, a, a repeat basis over a period of time, well, I think that uh, the companies should seriously look at whether or not they want those people as their customers. Yeah, what about pornography on, 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 on I mean, like that, I, to be honest with you, I, I do have sympathy for politicians and people in, in, in high profile positions, but, you know, you can go onto Twitter, go into the search box and literally search anything and unfiltered the most extreme pornography will pop well, up regardless I of mean, what your age is. that not something really and, the politicians and, should and, be more and, focused and, on? And, uh, that is very degrading and so if you want that to be part of the conversation if that's your proposal Greg that is certainly something that can be part of the conversation but I am not in favour of uh, hate uh, language uh, becoming a commonplace on social media and what happens then is that vulnerable people become caught up in it the people who are doing it may be very mentally stable and self-assured but other people reading it absorbing it becoming influenced by it may be very wrongly and badly influenced both in terms of themselves and what happens to other people Okay, so so what do you think will happen um, as it relates to the the, the, the possibility of, of either it being legislated for in some way or other, or pressure being put on uh, those that host uh, these services to to be as probably you would see more responsible in, in what they permit to be said on their platforms? Well, I think there needs to be a general uh, sense, if you like, of of of, of respect for the importance of argument, of civil argument, of discussion, of disagreement, of uh, actually working together, uh, working by talking with, discussing with people how to resolve issues. I don't think the way to do that is to resolve, is, is to resort to the kind of behaviour where essentially it's, it's violence by another means. Mm. In other words, you might... So, but say I say to you, Deputy... The, the, and I'm only saying this because of the complexities of it. So say, for instance, I say to you something incredibly offensive using bad language and you want that filtered out and, and that... Yeah. But say, for instance... Say, say, then, yeah, but just let me... If I could just con conclude this bit of the argument. But then I say to someone else, uh, a, a teenage boy or girl, and, and fat shame them, not using abusive language, but using unfilterable language to make them feel bad about themselves, to make them feel low. Uh, and, you know, that could have as bad of an impact on them as calling someone a, a C or an yes, F could. Yes, so how... Yes. So you can't just... We but can't sorry, approach it through censorship, but, but, can but, we? But can I give you another example? If you say that you want to rape a woman politician, you want to see her rape, you want to see her daughters raped, uh, you want to see her family dead, and so on. Is that acceptable? I don't think that's acceptable. And a lot, uh, there are a lot of people who might say, oh, that's just the give and take of politics. It's not, in my view, the give and take of politics, because we're entering a climate uh, where it becomes 
easy to actually identify other people as an enemy and as they're an enemy that enemy is there to be destroyed not physically but verbally through social media i don't think that's what social media is for and uh, i know a lot of people are very nervous about saying anything like this but i want to be very clear about saying it there was a conference uh last year uh in a, a couple of months ago in kerry on um, in w- women in the media and just just picking up on your example that you were giving there about somebody's appearance, um, one of the journalists there was saying that increasingly now there are people who are nervous about going onto uh, particularly uh, TV and, and uh, uh, similar uh, broadcast media uh, for fear that it's, it's too much because uh, their appearance is going to be taken apart and dissected. Now, that's part of what politicians do. So I'm not saying that in relation to politicians. I'm just quoting what journalists were saying in relation uh, to what's been happening where it's open season on social media. I, I, I just, the, the thing about, maybe it's the climate we're in, but you have politicians that make decisions to cut, to, to, to cut uh, money uh, in the area of mental health or in the area of uh, elderly people or homelessness, that actually genuinely we can show that that is killing people, uh, and where's but the account- also, where's the accountability I'm... there? Uh, and then oh, what would? Sorry, you... uh, sorry uh, Greg. I'm also a politician who made decisions that actually saved the Irish social welfare system uh, from going down the road of Greece. Uh, I'm very proud of that. I would love to have had more money to be able to do more of it. But in fact, I was able to restore the Christmas bonus. I was able to uh, get a lot of people help with getting back to work. Admittedly, not as many people in Donegal as I would have liked. So I'm very proud of that. Mm. And, and you and used people, you used politics people, responsibility in in, in and, your and, in your mind, like I use social media responsibility and other, uh, responsible. And other, and other people take a different view of that, which they're absolutely entitled to take. I'm not disputing that they're entitled to take that view, uh, a different view of it, but I'm very sure in my own mind of having inherited literally uh, a social welfare yeah, but do, system. Do you understand that? Do you understand this? Yeah, but, but you understand... But I'm not objecting yeah. to somebody criticising me. Or it's not criticising. People have lost their lives because of political welfare. decisions uh, and, and, you know, you have good politicians and you've got politicians that have to make uh, ba- uh, difficult decisions or even bad decisions. Uh, and then, in, uh, by contrast, in social media, you've got people that use it responsibly, t- responsibly and then you've got people that use it well, irresponsibly or make bad, then, po- po- make well, bad decisions. Then, so you don't use maybe, one brush well, for maybe, all. But maybe then... We're not talking about the average person who's on social media. Social media exactly. is not Exactly. Good. You're We're not talking about the average about person. A small minority of people who do not use social media in a way that's healthy or good. And then you introduce am, censorship for all. Repeat, no, I'm just going to repeat what I said, Greg, which is that we need as a society to have a conversation about this and how we go about getting the social media structure that actually supports people, helps people, uh, informs people, helps people to enjoy life, to expand their lives, not one which is destructive of people. Mm. I'm just saying, take the hate language out of it. I'm all for discussion. I've no difficulty with discussion, but uh, I'm very opposed and very concerned about hate language and hate, hate imagery being imposed, be, being used on social media and the damage that can inflict both on the people who are the recipients of it and most of all uh, on the mindset of the people who are the purveyors and the writers. And I fully agree with you and I'd love to see the general social media community round more on those that do this, you know, rather than retweeting and favouriting and liking and sharing, you know, that, these that, people that should may be. Also, be you know, suggestion. I think, as I said to you, I, I, I don't have the last word on this at all. I mean, uh, younger people are much more adept at social media. It's more important in their lives. They understand it better, and I accept that. But all I'm saying is, I think we just need to give the pause button a press and say, right, can we do this better in a way, uh, notwithstanding all the good that, that, that it does, some people are very, can become very damaged by it.